that. A crying shame it is. Not a foot will I set in the church till that creature's gone. Saints protects it. Don't be the hair I'll have of a hussy. There she sits, pure as a lily, the devil himself in her eyes. Oh, you're a dark one, young miss. A dark one and a strange one. Throw her out. Get rid of her. It's nothing like that one we want amongst us. Drive her out of the village. It's the priest himself should be told to send her away. And at high time, too. Or we'll do the sending for her. What's not a stitch on our back? We've come to speak to you about that girl. Yes, Emmy Bodie. She's got to go. We've been asked by the women of the village, Father, to speak to you. We're not going to let our parish be upset by a girl the like of that. She's... she's... Yes? She's what? Well, Father, she's a bad influence. She's young, I know. But the men... <gasps> the men? Well, Father, you know what men are. Being unmarried myself, fortunately. It's no concern of mine one way or the other. Emmy is peculiar, very peculiar. The women see something in her father that's not, not modest. She unsettles the men. Father, send her away. We don't like her here. I'm aware of this attraction she has for her opposite sex, but she's highly strong and emotional, and she tries to avoid trouble, God help her. I've seen it myself, but she's my servant. Here, at least, I can watch her and help her. I warn you, Father. We won't have any peculiar girls in a community like ours. It's your responsibility. Get rid of her at once. Oh, please, be quiet. I beg your pardon, ladies. I'm... I'm forgetting myself. I know you have the welfare of the parish at heart. I know that well indeed, but... Let me think. I, I beg of you to... Let me think about it. I don't like it. Child, what is it that gets into you? Emmy, tell me. I'm always like this when the organ plays. Something terrible rises up in me and I, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. I'm not myself anymore. I'm all alone. Father, I'm all alone and lost. Father, I'm not dead. There's 
good and bad in all of us, child. But while you're in this house of God, let it be only good. any day. And what do you say, eh? Now, is it a cigarette she'll be after having? Michael Patrick will hear him a broth of a boy. Sure, I will be that, be that. Ha-ha. <laughs> oh, three more days and we're back in England. Aye, aye. We're here. Here. Oh, come on, Betty. Give us a smile. What's wrong, Betty? Aren't you going to speak to me? Me mammy says I mustn't speak to you. But why, Betty? I'm not so terrible, am I? No, am I? Look, do you like my flowers? They're nice, aren't they? Well, they're all yours. Don't you touch my child, you brazen slut. The sooner you run out of this village, the better for all of us. Stop crying, you. I told you not to talk for it. Go on, get in there. That's all right. Well, you want me to go back and kick the rest of it in? Oh, no. Okay. You say the word and I'll pull the old shop down. Here, I was watching you and that kid. Well, you're not the most popular girl in the school, are you, eh? I... It's... They've fairly got it in for you, haven't they? It's just silly. I don't know what it is. They're always at me and... Well, thank you very much for what you did. <laughs> I haven't seen you before. I mean, you're not from the village, are you? Not me. I'm with a fair. You are? That's right, I fight. In the boxing booth, you know. Battling Dan, the heavyweight wonder. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Here, why don't you come and watch me? Oh, I've never seen a boxing match in my life. Well, now's your chance. Well, you're going to the fair, aren't you? Oh, I shouldn't have thought a pretty little girl like you would be sure to someone to give her an evening out. Well, I haven't been asked. Well, I'm asking you. Now, how about coming with me, eh? After the fights. No, I couldn't do that. Why couldn't you? I don't know you. Oh, you'll know me well enough after a night at the fair. No. No, really, I couldn't. Fine, then that's settled. <laughs>
Scrap, eh? Who for? The girl? Girl? What girl? Oh, I'm not blind. One more scrap like that and you go out in your ear. Now, nah, look here, Joe. I was only playing to the gallery. Well, you've got to give the customers a run for their money. Don't you worry about their money. I'm worried about mine. Chocolate kid won't be fit to fight for days. Bashing the life out of him like that. Now, listen Shut here, up. Joe. You're not punishing my lad so that you can show off to a bit of a girl. Who, me? Yes, you. I don't want no boxy Casanova in my outfit to remember that. And where do you think you're off to now? I'll be back in half an hour. Just going out for a breath of air. Oh, so that's what you call it, is it? Well, see, you're back in time. Because if you're late, she can have those beautiful big muscles of yours and have them for good.
been so happy. Not in all my life. Good. Well, could you have done better with anyone else? Go on, say it. Aren't you glad it was me? Yes, Dan, I am. Why not me? You. Better than wasting them on Betty Grable, here. Yeah? Well, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you, Dan. Only I don't want to. You like me, don't you? Dan, that's cool. Stay down. What's all this innocent stuff for, eh? Oh, you don't need it with me. Now, look at me, my girl. Come on. Trying to pretend you've never been out under the moon with one of the village lads. You know, there's something about you, Em. Don't know what it is, but it kind of... Well, it kind of gets me. Yes, on, honest, Emmy, I mean it. Yes, I know, it's what they say to all the girls, but... Sure as I'm here, it's true. Yes, you've got something on. Emmy! Emmy! Ah! Hey, lads, here's a bit of fun. Emmy, go Now, hold on, Emmy. Hold on. Let me go. 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 My child, I, I must talk to you. Come in, child. Sit down. Emmy. What is it, Father? There's something I have to say to you. Something I haven't found it easy to bring myself to do, but, well, I can no longer avoid it. Emmy, you've been a good servant to me. I'm going to miss you very much. Miss me? Yes, child. For you're going away. But I don't want to go. Emmy, try not to make it harder for both of us and try to understand. For months now, your life in this place has been clouded with hate. The women, you know, they see something in you that they fear, something unusual and strange that, well, perhaps only women understand. And so all this hatred, all this persecution, no, it must end. I'm afraid, child, I, I must con consider the peace of the parish, and well, while you are here, it seems there can be no peace. Don't cry, child. Look at me. I've written to some friends of mine on a farm in England. Good, kindly people they are. You'll be happy with them, I know. And you'll be as fine a servant to them as you've been to me. But I don't want to go, Father. I don't know any other life. Father, I'm all alone. And I've only you to help me. Please, Father, 
Please tell me I can stay. Who's the women? They hate me. They always have. What have I done that's wrong? Can I help it? If wherever I go, the men's eyes follow me. Go to the village. The farm boys stare at me. Men in the pubs look over their glasses and grin. I can almost hear every word they say. All of them. Staring and whispering. The women. So dreadful to me. And it's, it's no fault of mine. Emmy. You're not from this part of the world, are you? No, I'm from Ireland. Why then? Then you're the new girl. Here, come on. Give me your bag. <laughs> Jacob, take them, will you? We're going out to the house. All right. There it is. Well, come on. You'll find them all in a bit of a scramble. You know what it's like when we're shearing. Come on, Wager. Come on, there's a good boy. I say, just look what Larry's found for himself. One of them's a fast worker, and I bet it isn't her. It must be the new girl from Ireland. Come on. Beth! Beth! Oh, Bess, this is Amy. Oh, come in, won't you? We weren't expecting you so soon. Father Corcoran didn't say you were coming today. You're Amy Birdie, aren't you? Yes. How do you do? You must have had a tiring journey. I, I was a little bit sick on the ship. Oh, poor thing. Well, you'd better sit down, haven't you? Bess, did I or did I not... Who's this? It's the new girl, Dad. You remember that Father Corcoran wrote to us about. Oh. Well, make yourself at home. You'll soon get to know us. You, um, you came rather suddenly, didn't you? I mean, uh, we didn't know you were coming, did we? Oh, yes, it was all rather sudden. I'm like that, you know. Everyone in the village said, no, Emmy, you mustn't go. You must stay here with us. But when I make up my mind, I never waste time. They like me, you know. Well, perhaps you'd like to hang your coat in the kitchen, would you? It was all rather sudden. I'm like that, you know. When was she born? Not what we expected, is she? Luscious bit of goods. Well, if I can help... Oh, no, I don't want you to start work yet. Perhaps you'd like to wash your hands and I can show you around a bit. You're very kind. I say, Bess, hurry up with the tea. The men are parched. Emmy, you'd better meet Saul. Julie's young man. You'll be seeing quite a lot of him. Oh, how'd you do? Thought I heard your beautiful voice. You've nothing else to do but come wiring us here. Nothing else to do? Breaking our backs out there, not even a cup of tea. Well, don't bother us. We work here. Come off it. Give us a kiss. Well, mind my lipstick. 
Don't take any notice of them, Emmy. When you two have quite finished spooning... That's all right. What's the time tonight? Take Emmy with you, will you? I'd like her to find a way about. Oh, yes, of course. Here you are, Emmy. Go and see what a real farm's like. Let me know as soon as you're ready for supper. Right. Call me too soon for me. Come on. She's a marvel, isn't she? Wouldn't say boo to a goose. What do you think of her? The men will like her. I'll say. Why don't you? I don't know. Feel a bit strange around here, won't you? Yes. I've never been out of Ireland before. What did you say your name was? Saul? That's right. The Bible says that Saul was a choice young man and goodly. Do you ever read it? Oh, not often. Oh, it's very interesting, if you know the right parts to read. Oh, well, well. Bob, tease up. Bit late, aren't you? Emmy, this is Bob, Bess's old man. Not so much of the old. And this is Emmy. She's the new help. How do you do? Hope you'll be very happy here. Hang on a minute, have some tea, then you can take the cups back. <laughs> Hearty sharing's I seen on this farm, man and boy, and I'll tell you something. Sure as I'm here, every shearing brings a wedding. And every wedding brings a christening. <laughs> You've done your share, Jacob. <laughs> and he don't talk about the wedding. <laughs> well, who's next pushing bride for ball and chain? Hey, young Gooley, eh? When's that be lad yonder going to have his hands full? Yes, do it. When's the christening? Don't you look at me, Jacob, you old good. What about you? Ah, that's right, Jacob. Now, when's wedding bells going to ring for thee? Eh? <laughs> Not me. As my old dad used to say, it's a wise man as chases a woman, but only a fool catches up with you. <laughs> Come on, Jacob, give us a tune. <laughs> Listen to them, best lads in the country. You like it here, Amy? Oh, Mr. Talent, this is like a home, and I've never had a home. And you're all such good and solid people. I'm going to be very happy here. quiet, isn't she? Why shouldn't she be? Just look in there and see what she's doing with you. Oh, Bess. Yes, Julie? Oh, nothing, Emmy. It's, it's quite all right. Mm -hmm. I do wish you wouldn't make me spy on her. What was she doing? Polishing the silver and enjoying it. You don't like Emily, do you? Have I ever said so? You never needed to. Your eyes are enough. Who's that beer for, Emmy? Why, Larry, in the stables. Oh. Will you tell him supper will be ready soon? What are you smiling at? I don't know. Perhaps I just like to smile. And just what have you got against her? 
Nothing at all. Don't be your laddie. Oh, I could do with that. Thanks. Have some yourself. I should I never touch it. You don't know what you're missing. Supper's nearly ready. I'll be in to wash as soon as I've got the nags out to graze. Come on, Tom. Come on. There's a good point. Come on. Come on. For your sweet Irish tooth. Hello. Hello. Bess and Julie, huh? Yes, they are surely. Oh, it's sweltering hot outside. What do you think? I wouldn't know. Whatever you think will do. I don't go. Larry about somewhere? Strange you should ask me that. You must have passed him just now. So you're not fooling me, you see. You're very young, aren't you? Am I? It's a great pleasure to have you breathing down my neck. Like it? It wasn't so drafty. And it's thirsty work in the fields, isn't it? Well, why do you ask? Because I just smell that you've quenched it. I never know when you're joking. You're a funny thing. Indeed, how I must make myself laugh. Now, you mustn't stand so close to me. If someone were to come in, it'd be a great pity to make a fool of yourself. You like me, don't you? I haven't given it a thought. Amy, there's... There's something about you that, that... You know what I mean. Don't you? Don't you? Indeed, I hope I don't. Now, I think it would be much better if... very quietly you were to tiptoe out and go... Stop it! I don't know what the devil's got hold of me. When I come near you, I... I don't seem to be able to... I never seem to hold myself. I... I can't. I can't. Are you laughing at me? Let me look at you. And don't joke with me. Very deep chest. You're stronger than I thought. No. No, you mustn't kiss me. Saul! Why, you... Julie, shut up. Shut up. I'll scratch your beastly face, you scared chasing little cat. Let me alone. Julie, please. Don't touch me. What is all this? This is smirking ape. Can't be left alone with a maid for half a minute. It goes like a bull at her. You cheap little rotter. I ought to put my nails down your face. Julie, that'll do. Emmy, come here. It's not Emmy's fault. It's that mesh. Julie. You've been making rather a fool of yourself, haven't you? Uh, Bess, I, I, I don't know what came over me. No, I don't think you do. Haven't you ever seen a good-looking servant before that you have to behave like a clown with ours? Sorry. Now, listen to me, you turnip. You concoct a story Julie can pretend to believe. I'll do the rest. Just a minute, Emmy. I haven't finished with you. You're by way of being a bit of a flirt, aren't you? You shouldn't say that. Well, I do say it. And you needn't look so pious. Butter wouldn't melt in your mouth, I know. Well, you don't bring those habits to this farm. It's terrible the things you say. I'm not a bad girl. What made you leave your village in Ireland? Father Cockney. I want to know why. Tell me. He wrote to you for me to come here. They didn't like you, did they? They didn't, did they? Why? Why? Leave me alone, can't you? Where is Larry? How often have I got to tell that young man he's be in time for lunch? Oh, come on, let's start without him. I'm starving. Oh, here he is. Trust him to be around when there's a smell of food about. Say, what do you know? Murdoch's fair has come to match with. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, Emmy. Feeling a bit off? Can't have Emmy going down on us. Well, you've been slave driving her best. Oh, Bob, as if I would. You do look a bit pale, Emmy. No, I'm all right. 
Really, I'm all right. Now, Dad, just you look at this. Murdoch's mammoth fair. Boxing, Don't hoopla. Don't that thing in my face. Well, you might read it. Oh, come on, Dad, be your age. How about you and I hitting the high spot tonight? Just the two of us. A couple of young lads on a spree. It's all good. It might be rather fun. I wouldn't even think of it. Oh, I'm an alderman. Wouldn't do for me to be seen down at the fair mixing up with gypsies and the like. Hello, it might do you good. What do you say, Bob? Hmm, all oh, right. Oh, come on, Dad. Stop being chairman of the gas committee for once. I repeat, I will not. Good. Let's settle. And we'll celebrate. We'll take my new car. Good grief, it goes. Goes? What do you mean, goes? She'll hit up 30 on the flat. Where's your coat, Emmy? My coat? Why, oh, I'm not coming. Of course you're coming. A bit of excitement will do you good. Oh, you'll have the chickens in this. Oh, don't be so fussy. Fresh air will soon blow that away. I don't want to go to the fair. Please, I don't want to go. Now, don't argue. You could do with a bit of fun. Come on, plenty of room on top. Now then, Larry, no speeding, my boy. Glad word, no welcome for your old friend Dan. It's a bit of a shock for any girl, isn't it? When someone pops up from nowhere and says, Hello, Emmy, remember me? Well, do you? Of course I do, Dan. I'm glad to see you only. Only you were kind of hoping you'd never meet me again. Well, you know me, Emmy. Always turning up like a bad penny. I'm talking to you. Look at me. I'm looking. That's better. They told me in that Irish village of yours where you'd gone, so I thought to myself, I can wait. And one of these days I'll look old Emmy up. Yes, Emmy'll always be glad to see me. Very likely faint with joy when she sets eyes on my face. Eh? Hey, isn't that so? Dan, I'll see you some other time. Why? I'm afraid your fine friends might see you with me because Dan. I could tell them one or two things about you, couldn't I? Couldn't I? Yes, dark horse you and you, Emmy. Here, you remember this, eh? Remember it? You tried to spoil my beauty, didn't you? Well, I haven't forgotten you, Emmy. No, you're not the sort of girl anyone forgets. Dan, let me be. I'm happy. Happier than I've ever been in the whole of my life. Don't follow me, Dan. Let me be in peace. Yeah, break in my heart. Now, you listen to me, my girl. I found out a few things about you in that village after you'd gone. All oh, those women knew you, didn't they? Yes, you're not as simple as you look. Take your tickets here at the box for the greatest show on earth. One scene never forgotten. Hurry, hurry, <laughs> and that's you, Emmy. One scene never forgotten. Uh, it's no use, Emmy. I can't get you out of my mind. I ought to keep away from you after this, but I can't. I can't let you out of my sight. Uh, it's not like old Dan, is it, eh, to be mad about a girl like you? Well, you're not leaving me tonight. Come on. Okay, you don't like Emmy, do you? I wonder why. Now, go on, be quiet. Go on, get back in your corner. Why, you...
What's the matter with you? Yelping like that, you? With a fair little fella. Shut up! Dan, are you in there? Dan? All right, all right. You're no big canary. Now cut it out, will you? Shut up. Dad, you properly let your hair down. What an evening, I'm limp. Look, do you think we ought to go without Emmy? Lord knows where she's got to in that fair ground all alone. Oh, I shouldn't worry about her, she'll be all right. lost in the crowd. I met a friend. Oh? Who? There was no one to introduce us, so I don't really know. But he was ever so nice and gay. He took me everywhere, to the shows and the roundabouts. It didn't take you long to get fixed up, did it? Isn't it funny? It never does. Hold tight. Here we go. I'll be down. Better go down and see, eh? Yes, I... Well, go on. Oh, me? Go down yourself. Night starvation, that's what's wrong with me. Come on, girls, get in there. Go on, go on. Get in there. It's all right, Emmy, I'll do that. Go and fetch the milk, will you? All right. Where's the towel, Bess? Bess? Oi. Oh. What's the matter, old girl? You're looking a million miles away this morning. I'm sorry. What have you been up to? Dipping the housekeeping money, buy yourself a new hat, eh? Bob, yeah? I may have been dreaming, but did you hear the church organ being played last night? Yeah, what? I woke up suddenly. Must have been about three o'clock. At first I thought I was crazy. But I had the oddest feeling somebody was playing the organ. It was very soft, as if they didn't want to be heard. Who want to play the organ in the middle of the night? But Bess! I had it too. Shoe fly pie and apple pie, Dowdy. Hello, what's wrong with you? Yes, I thought I was daft. I woke up and I could have sworn I'd heard the organ playing. It was so quiet, like a graveyard. 
Then the moon frightened me, so I put my head back under the sheets. Of all the fishy stories. Uh, some joker, I suppose. Or the sexton stealing him for the spot of jazz. Siri, it's made me come all out in goose pimples again. Hello, Dad. You really too. Here's some news for you. There's been a murder around here. Young gypsy fellow found dead in Smithers barn. Came from the fair at Matrix, so they say. We were at the fair last night. How horrible. We might even have bumped into the chap. The things that are happening in this village of ours. Organs playing, murders. Makes you wonder what's going to happen next. Well, come on. Let's have breakfast before the bacon gets cold. Get the bread, Amy, will you? Come on, Dad, spill it. Let's have the rest of the news. Proper state, old Smithers. No one likes to find a young gypsy dead in his barn. Wouldn't have known who it was but for the dog. Dog? Hmm, big brute of a thing. Kept standing over him, wouldn't let anyone get near. There was a chap hanging around here. He had a dog. Up to mischief it was him. And he's found it now. Probably about to see him before makes through his thankful army. You'll have to see over your feet before you know it. Very tricky, these tides. Sea comes flooding round the headland there, and quick as a flash, you'll be underwater there. Still, you wouldn't expect a farm girl to know much about tides. And how do you know where I come from? Oh, I keep my eyes open, I do. Work up at the Talon Farm, don't you? You're Emmy Bodine. It's nice to be famous, isn't it? Well, I know you too. You're David Price. <laughs> Many's the time I've wanted to talk to you. I've seen you here before, standing just where you are now, looking out to sea. Not many people come to this cove. But you and me have the kind of feeling it belongs to us. You do like it here? It's my favorite spot. <laughs> it is so. I just stand here alone. Watching that sea come rushing in. And thinking maybe. It's just like me, that sea. Nothing holds it back. You'd never think it had such strength. And then its hands come out and crash on the rocks and tear at them. And all the thunder is in your ears. You know, you're not like a servant girl at all. Oh, I'm sorry. What I mean is you. I know what you mean. But then I'm not like any other girl, am I? Oh, here she comes, I told you so. Here, let me help you. Would you like me to show you somewhere where it's safer? Quieter, you know. Yes, I'd like that a lot. Thank you very much, David. Inquiries are now being made. Any information should be sent at once to David Price. Got himself into the papers at last. I know where David is. Oh, you do, do you? And where might one ask, Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Having a bit of fun in York, that's where he is. Don't blame him either. This village is dull as death. People are worried about it, though. Seems odd for a lad like David to just disappear off the face of the earth. Oh, Bob. The earth's big enough for him to be somewhere on it. He's only been missing a few days. Why, there's that dog again. They ought to get the poor creature rounded up. It's been out on the moor since that gypsy was found. It's pathetic, isn't it? It's frightening, too. I can just imagine that poor brute wandering around the place where his master was found, knowing as little as we do. I'm getting a feverish imagination. 
So I'll give Julia a hand, will you? Oh, yes, right. Bob, just a minute. Don't go yet. You're upset, aren't you? A little. What is it? David Price? Do you know, I don't think we shall ever see him again. At least alive. Don't look at me as if I were crazy, Bob. I feel it. I'm certain. And it's a curious thing. Whenever I think of him, that fairground boy comes into my mind. What was his name? Dan. But there's no connection between the two. You're letting it prey on your bears. Now, come on. Let's snap out of it, eh? Bob, I'm frightened. Hey. I'm sorry. I know it's not like me to be upset this way. But you remember the night I told you the church organ play when that boy Dan was found? Now, you're not going to bring that silly business up again. Well, I can't get it out of my mind. It seems to haunt me. They seem to belong. Now, what the devil's the connection between some fathead playing the organ and the death of that gypsy fella? One's just daft, but the, the other's evil. But don't you see? They may both be evil. There's Larry. You know what's the matter with you, Bess? Your imagination's working over time. Any reek of penitent. It's fixed all right. Saul, your hands are blistered. Oh, nothing to worry about. What's the matter with Larry? What's wrong, lad? What's the matter? Larry, what is it? Better get the police. We've found David Price. It doesn't seem possible. David. Always laughing, joking. Now, don't you carry on. Oh, you can pretend to be brave, but I'm not. There you go. <laughs> Just like a tap, when everybody ought to keep their heads. 
It's odd, isn't it? To think that that dog may know. And we don't. You look tired out, all of you. Go on upstairs and wash. You need a rest. Good night, Beth. Good night, Larry. It's not going to be very pleasant, is it? Having this creature in our midst. Never knowing where it's going to strike next. I think it's going to be nice to sit in church and suddenly look round at seemingly respectable people and think maybe it's him. Maybe. Bob, I want Emmy to go. Emmy, go? I, I won't have her here. She repels me. I can't tell you why. Has she been impudent? No. Bess, you're beyond me sometimes. I can't make you out. She does her job. She's cheerful. She tries to help. Why, well, you should have shut it down on her. I just don't understand. Bob, please. Now, don't stop me. I'm going to the police. startle me. I should say someone's been before me in doing that. What have you been up to? I came across the moors. That dog followed me. You frightened me. You're back early, aren't you? Don't you enjoy your evenings off? I went to the pictures. Really? What was on? Just a minute, Emmy. Don't go. I feel very upset. I should like to go and lie down. And if you're going to throw hard words against me, it would be much better for both of us if I were to go now. I'm very sensitive. And I do my work well, you know. You do? If I were to go to your husband and tell him you're persecuting me... Are you threatening me? I have my rights. I'm trying to be helpful. And you answer me back by unkindnesses. Emmy, look at me. We found David Price this evening, dead. And in our own barn, too. Whoever killed him tried to cover it up by setting the barn on fire. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? You were at the pictures, weren't you? What did I know about a fire in a barn? David Price? Not the well set up boy. With his hair curling in the wind. Little freckles behind the ears. And dark eyes always with a smile in them. You're very observant. Did you know him? No. No, I didn't know him. Emmy, you can explain a lot of things. But there are some things you can't explain. I've felt a sense of horror ever since you came to this house. I won't believe you're as naive as all this. I believe you're rotten. Rotten, am I? I may only be a servant. But no one ever talked to me like that. Maybe you're jealous. Get out of here! I beg your pardon. I'm sure I don't know what came off.
your prayers, particularly this morning, for the repose of the soul of David Price. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord. And may he, along with all the souls of the faithful departed, rest in peace. Let us pray. O God, whose property is ever to have mercy and to forgive, we humbly entreat thee for the soul of thy servant, David. Larry, what are you doing down there? Now, Beth, don't be silly. Take that coat off. You can stop now. You hear? Never mind. This boy doesn't set foot outside this house tonight. Oh, Beth, I don't want to miss the fun. A whole crowd's going. Whoever's fooling around with that organ, we're going to pin the joker down once and for all. Look, what's going on? Don't we need any sleep? Get back to bed. Oh, get back to bed yourself. Listen. There's someone in the lane. Are you hearing things, too? I tell you, I heard someone running. There. So what? Don't get all worked up. It's no ghosty. <laughs> it's only Saul. We arranged to meet next time the organ plays. Saul. Well, of all the yeah, stupid... Let me. I'll go. Good evening. How nice of you to call. Oh, but Bess, I did... Come here, Saul. You coming in, too? Yes. Beg pardon, Mum. We'll wait outside. Well, are you coming, Larry? Of course he's not coming. Now, don't you boss me about. We're not married yet. Oh, Bess, don't be a spoiled sport. There's a crowd surrounding the church now. Ten to one, they'll lay hands on the fella. You don't know what an itch I've got trying not to lay hands on you. That'll do from you. Go and make these idiots some coffee. Bob. Huh? Go and get dressed, will you? You and Larry better see Saul home. Oh, but... And it'll be over before we get there. Alex, see what's going on. <laughs> Thing to come popping in out of the night. Take your ugly face away from that window, Alec Wilson. <laughs> Very frightened, no, she did. <laughs> we can't wait here all night. Come on, let's go. What happened? 
Oh, they're not coming. Come on. Here comes the storm. I wonder if it'll wake Emmy. Bet off on her pet warpath again. Curious, isn't it, how soundly she slipped through all this racket? I should have thought the noise you've been making would have wakened anybody. What a night of scares. I saw you. Where have you been? You'd better tell me. Then perhaps you'd better not threaten me. All right. I woke up and heard the organ play, so... so I thought I'd creep out and see who it was. I... I saw someone run out of the back of the church and go across the moors. Well? My heart was banging away. I was too frightened to follow all on my own. Then I saw the men from the village. They frightened me, too. And I suppose you saw my husband and Larry with them? Yes, that's right. I saw them, too. Both of them. It's a vivid imagination you've got. Because my husband and Larry didn't go with the others. Well, you needn't pretend anymore, Amy. I know who's been playing the organ all these weeks. It's been you. It's a lie. And you're going to tell me what's behind this filthy thing. I'll shake it out of you. Let me go. You're hurting me. Answer me. Oh. See what you've done to my wrist. I wish I could make you suffer for that. It never leaves me alone. Never. You great dog. Yellow eyes! Why are you so frightened of it? Stay with me for a little. I don't want to go to bed. I look out my window at night. And there's that dog. Standing in the yard. So quiet. Just looking. And looking. You terrify me. 
is something dreadful about you. Whatever it is, it's getting out of here. You'll pack your things the moment it's like and get out of this house. But you can't do that to me. I have nowhere to go. I don't care where you go. So long as you go. You're a heartless, wicked woman to just throw me out like that. I have to have a roof over my head. Get out! My notice. I'll pay your notice. And don't come to this part of the world again. I'd be sorry for this. Sorry. Just you see. What's going on? What's the matter, Bez? Not now, Bob. I couldn't bear any more. Well, what is it? I've just sacked Emmy. Have you? Well, that's all right. Oh, Bob. No need for you to be so upset about it. <laughs> Here, come on. You need a good night's sleep. <laughs> You'll be gone in the morning. You can bank on that. We've had quite a day, one way or another. Larry, switch the lights off and lock up, will you? Okay, Bob. Catch your death of cold, I don't know. Hello, yes, Constable Manley speaking. Who's that? Oh, George Dratchett. You know the time of night. What's that? Larry Talent, dead. That girl? Out in the moors, you think? Aye, best thing. Block all the roads quick. Yes, George, I'll be with you as fast as I can. She's out by law, Mrs. Farr. Out on the moors. Well, she's welcome to it in this. All right, lads, spread out and keep your eyes skin. Come on, Jack. Ready, Paul? I'll get Bob. All right. Bets. Don't try to console me anymore, Bob. You mean well. Just don't. You are so quiet and calm. Wish I wouldn't try and hold it in like this. Wish you'd cry like Julie. She'll feel better for you. I'm not the crying kind. I just gotta sit and think. Oh, Bob, we're ready. Hello, Bess. 
How's Julie? For well, better now. Mum got her to sleep. I sent the wire to your dad. The train ought to get him in by the morning. Thank you, Sol. Be back presently. Try and get some rest. <coughs> you loved him too, didn't you? Yes, Emmy. I knew you'd be here. Are you afraid of me? Why have you come here? Don't you know? No. Don't come near me. Don't. Don't. Let me be. Can't you see I'm all alone? Cold and wet with no one to turn to. Not there. I heard them, the men and the cars, all after me, hunted me as if I were a beast. What do you want with me? What did you want with Larry? I'm sorry. I liked him, you know. You liked him? Do you know what he meant to us? We loved him. All the way here, I said to myself, Larry is gone. You shall never see him again. I wanted to kill you with my own hands. But now, now, you keep torturing me, and I'm not well. How could I help the way men looked at me? Terrible things that came over me. No one will ever understand. No one. Now everything's closing around me. I'm sorry for myself. Am I going to die? I think so. No. Don't look at me like that. I couldn't help it. I couldn't. Please help me. Help you. I'm not even human when I look at you. As long as I live, I shall think of you and hate you. You killed my brother. Well, you'll answer for that. Perhaps he's waiting for you now. And David Price. And that fair ground boy, Dan. At least I hope they are. 
Now you can go. Go? I don't understand. I don't understand. You will. Why are you doing this for me? Go on. Get out.